Welcome to the Bible Balance HealthCast, episode number 477, How Dr. Moffin Stays Youthful and in Shape. Bio Balance Health features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Moffin, Medical Director of Bio Balance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Dr. Moffin and Brett are the authors of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the newly released book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of T replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Moffin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Moffin's office is currently accepting new patients. One of the primary focal points of the practice at BioBalance Health is to help people find ways to live independently and healthily all the days of their lives and to lengthen those lives as much as they can. We want you to live a long time. We want you to be healthy. We want you to be able to be independent. So in the process, many of the clients that come to BioBalance Health come after their 40s or 50s when they've lost their hormones. The balances have changed. And the primary focus is getting those balances restored to what they were when you were young and healthy. And that helps you have the opportunity, the capacity to build muscle muscle strength, to uh, resist or avoid diseases that are common uh, when they occur among the elderly that lead to crippling uh, situations or death. And so we try to give you the foundation to build upon, but there's always a program involved. There's a program for getting your hormone balances correct. Then there are programs for appropriate eating and appropriate exercise. And people always ask, Kathy, what do you do? You know, because mm-hmm. it, it seems overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And she will give them an answer at the time. But, but we continue to get personal questions and questions from online, from people that watch and listen to our podcast, uh, and then write to us from around the world. What do you do? What works for you in a busy, fast-paced, professional woman's life? As you age, how are you juggling all of those balls and staying fit and healthy? And so... In response to those questions, Dr. Maupin sat down and, and talked with me about what her program is for dieting and exercise. And so, mm-hmm. it's, but I want to say something first, if I can. Okay. What, whatever the specifics are, you're talking about eating yogurt or so many ounces of protein or uh, <laughs> resistance uh, weights. I know all those are in part of what we're going to be talking about. Mm-hmm. But not, you can have the perfect program, and it doesn't matter if you don't do it. We live lives that are fast-paced, and we are marketed in our society for immediate satisfaction, immediate consumption. So the idea of planning meals, of going to the store and selecting ingredients and preparing your stuff ahead of time sounds really great. I mean, we can all talk about it and say, yeah, amen. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm down for that. That's good. Mm -hmm. Uh, But if you don't do it and you don't think about it, it isn't going to help you. We can give you some tools but you have to put those tools to use to build a structure. Mm -hmm. So I may keep referencing that back because Mm -hmm. I find it very difficult to do. And and it's easier for me to go buy a box of donuts than it is to think about eating a healthy breakfast. Well, but you don't plan the meals. Your wife does. True. Uh, and absolutely. in general, John and I plan the meals together. And he, he's You plan for a week at a time? or A week week at a time. So so for eating, we try to have um, healthy... Snacks and, and that's, in you, the house. you don't keep crap in the house that's harmful. I try not to keep crap in the house. But, but somebody sneaks have, it in. Yeah, sometimes it gets snuck in. But but we try we try. Would that be your assistant I'm just saying planner. What we try, and yeah. I, I have to say that you have to forgive yourself when you mess up. But we we schedule for the week what we're going to eat, and in general, we have meat or fish at every dinner. We usually have some kind of meat. So sorry, vegans, but this is this is. We have a lot of muscle mass to maintain, and we work out. So we have a lot of we have ham or turkey at lunch. We usually have limited bread. At least I have limited bread. Right. So if I'm going to have a sandwich, I'll have half a sandwich. Sometimes for breakfast, if I'm in a hurry, I'll have peanut butter with a little bit of honey on it on one piece of Dave's bread, which is really nutty kind of bread. Is that a national brand? And yes, okay. yes, it is. And it, and yeah, I, we've had it in 
California and, and in Florida. So yes, and it's it, it's really healthy, but I only eat one piece at a time because if I eat more, then I overstimulate my insulin, which would make me gain weight. So my, my Dr. Moppin's diet's on our website. If you go to our website, you can see Dr. Moppin's diet. It's three pages. It's not a book. Uh, it's easy, and you, all you do is count carbs. But basically, you have to eat six times a day. It's the opposite of intermittent fasting, which I don't really think for a lifetime works and isn't necessarily... Intermittent fasting, that's the one where you eat everything you eat by 7 o'clock at night, and you don't eat anything again until 10 o'clock or 7 o'clock the next morning? I believe so, but they have a different time frame. I mean, their time frames are, are specific, and I don't know what the time frames okay. are, but in general, you just don't eat anything, and then you eat everything all at once, which has never worked for me. I mean, right. that I could do without thinking. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I could not eat all day and then eat everything at night and gain weight. So, so in general... I talk to my patients about their, their blood type diets, basically your genetic diet that is healthiest for you. If I was looking at the diet I suggest for everybody mm -hmm. would be the Mediterranean diet, which is lots of fresh food, lots of fresh fruit, vegetables. We always have um, fruit and vegetables with every meal. We have a salad every night. We, have, we put all kinds of things in our salad. So we could just eat a salad if we want to or if we don't feel like having a big meal. So we put in nuts and cranberries and grapes and blueberries and, and in our salad with lots of fresh peppers and cucumbers or and any other vegetable that is in season that we can get to put in with our. And then you slather our, all that with a creamy ranch dressing. No, but I do. I I do crumble blue cheese over it and then do kind of a um, a vin oil and vinegar kind of dressing, balsamic vinegar. Again, more Mediterranean. Right, Mediterranean kind of diet. So, so for me, it's you have to have a, you have to eat six times a day. I have to have snacks like at no, ten. No, you're not talking about a prepared meal six times no, a day. I have to eat something six times a day, and each each time I eat it has to have protein in it. So, do you plan that consciously? I mean, like every two hours eat something, or every uh -uh. three hours eat something, or do you just no, well, I mean it's a habit now, so right. so I eat well, so I eat to my point, exactly. in the morning, usually a little before I work out and, and the rest after I work out, basically, and then something at ten, like um, a handful of of um, cashews that I have at my office, or almonds, or some kind of nut because that's the easiest for me. I don't have to refrigerate it; I can store it in my desk. It's it's right there. I can just grab it, eat it while I'm looking at the next chart. So. Um, then, then for lunch, I mean, we order lunch at the office, so I try to order something that's salad-like with some meat or cheese in it. Uh -huh. So, so these are so so basically, I have to eat all day. But my biggest issue probably is that someone else would look at my diet and say, "Oh no!" Is that we <laughs> we usually have these little tiny ice cream cones before, like after dinner, because we need something sweet. We haven't had something sweet. So, and they're only 125 calories. So generally, when I have read diet books or articles, uh, because my wife and I are similar to you and your husband, mm -hmm. I mean, he, he's six foot four and you're what three foot five. Or, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the information that we get is is focused in terms of total calorie count for the day. Yeah. And mine is supposedly twenty two hundred a day, and Phyllis's is like sixteen hundred a day. And she's frustrated because that's I, your basal metabolic rate. That's if you do nothing, you don't exercise. If you're lying in bed, doing nothing, then that's the calories you burn. Your body burns just to stay alive. Okay. Then you add to that. So that's your basal metabolic rate. Oh. Then you add to that other calories to make up. If you want to stay the same weight, to make up for your activities. So we have this app on our phones, My Fitness Pal, mm -hmm. for working out and stuff and track our meals. Mm -hmm. And it's based on, I mean, you put in whatever you eat, mm -hmm. but then it tells you where your calories are for the day mm -hmm. and if you're over or under and by mm -hmm. how much. So it's still focused on a caloric count. I don't, you know. You don't do that. I, I don't do that. And I wouldn't do that because that leaves me hungry. So I well, need, and, I actually need more calories but less carb. So I can eat, I can eat until I'm full of any kind of lettuce, any kind of vegetable, any kind of fruit, any kind I mean any kind of fruit except bananas. And I can and and they're fresh fruit or they're frozen fruit. They're not canned fruit. So there's no sugar in them. So I can no eat No sugar added. Added. Yeah. So I can I can eat that and eat lean meat and eat a half a potato and you know and eat 
a little bit of carb at each meal and be healthy and be full and, and either maintain my weight or if I want to exercise more, then I'll lose weight. So are some foods more generate a, a more of a feeling of fullness than others? Fats, fats like in your dense diet. meat? Healthy fats give you fullness. Fats. Fats. Okay. Healthy fats is what we recommend. And that's we, nuts. And that, that's nuts. That's oils. That's the oil on the salad. That's the fat in any milk product or cheese or blue cheese so that I put on my... So dairy is not a harmful thing or a bad thing? Not for, for me, it isn't. There are some people who have uh, celiac disease. Usually they can't have uh, gluten or Or if they're milk, lactose or if they're Or if they've developed a leaky gut, but I don't have that. So everything has to be made to order for you, which is what we do for our patients. You know, right. they ask me what to do, but what I do is not necessarily the best for somebody else. And you you have to eat what you're used to, although some of us learned terrible diets when we were young, all fatty and fried and, and things that make us obese. So we have to learn a whole new paradigm and teach our children that when they're young enough to listen. So when you were younger, you ate whatever your parents put on the table or brought to the house. Mm -hmm. Did you develop uh, comfort foods, an emotional connection yeah. to certain foods that when mm -hmm. you're stressed out or exhausted, you, you crave something over other things? Yeah, pasta. I mean, pasta. It's Italian. Italian. Mediterranean diet. Yeah, pasta, pasta. and bread. I yeah. mean, but, but those are the things that make me fat. Yeah. And so... Those are the things that I don't eat a lot of. We still eat pasta, but I eat a lot of sauce on my pasta and not very many noodles. Right. You know, so I limit the noodles, but I eat the sauce and then I eat a big salad. So then I'm really full. Yeah. And I feel like I've had a lot of spaghetti, but I haven't. Or, or yeah, pasta. yeah, or whatever pasta. I, Phyllis and I had this argument because I grew up in a, a country home in Arkansas where beans and cornbread were staples of our diet right. several times a week. And for and beans me, have some protein in them, there's, so a, there's okay. a comfort food. Uh, process mm -hmm. that I'll crave beans and cornbread. And right. to me, that's dinner. And Phyllis is like, well, that's one piece of it. Where's the meat? Where's the, what are the side dishes? We have to have a more full menu. Well, we and do I'm like, ham no. and beans. Well, that's well, ham and beans. Can, oh, ham no, and beans. ham and beans. I'm sorry. I, I don't said, do A can, can of beans. No. I'm like, no, no, it's not. Ham and beans. <laughs> sorry. And, you know, and so that has the protein in it. And you can always put vegetables in it and, and tomatoes and stuff with the beans. Yeah. Oh, and, and she does. I mean. You know, you can put a lot more into that. You just have to hold back on putting sugar in it, which is what some people do. Huh. Into beans, so I've never seen that. Oh, and I some remember my grandmother would make a big, pasta big pot of beans and cornbread, yeah. and then a pan of homemade brownies, oh. and that'd be dinner. <laughs> and she was probably skinny, but I mean, you know, no, no, no. she wasn't. Okay, but yeah. but so, I mean, some people can tolerate that, yeah. just not me. So they asked about me, so I'm telling them what I sure. do. Yeah. So over the years, I've figured this out that I get hypoglycemic if I eat carbs more than 25 grams of carb during the day. Then you get Everyone overproduces insulin then and gets hypoglycemic. So I do too. So I can't eat like there's birthday cake at the office. I can't eat that. I can't even taste it. Or I'm going to have, I'm going to be really tired and un unable to think the okay, rest so of the Okay, so my question is, can you not taste that because once you take a taste of it, you have to have more and no. it's really hard to stop? No, it's just that I can't taste it because that is so laden with sugar uh -huh. that it overstimulates my insulin and I get tired. So if you've ever get, gotten tired after a carbohydrate meal, that usually means that you're sensitive to insulin, or I mean you're resistant to insulin and you, you're overproducing it. That gives you, makes so, fat. So if they're having birthday cake at the office, you have like an apple? I have nuts or I have whatever I brought for lunch. Okay. Okay, so meat, that meat, fruit. So, I even eat, I, I, so my one weird thing that my granddaughters learned to do is to eat yellow peppers like an apple yeah so i eat yellow and red peppers and my staff grow gets because they're out. filling or because they they're taste, they're, something they to taste eat? sweet and they're vegetables and they don't have real sugar in them they're they aren't going to stimulate my insulin but right. i get that that sweet taste but it's a habit you have to habituate yourself to saying that's a good thing and, and i like that I, I want well that. I, i've always liked the way peppers taste i like the way cucumbers the taste and, yeah i like celery and peanut butter i mean so, so a lot of, of our food consumption is is sensory process. Right. And if the texture, right. if it feels solid, if it tastes good, if it's crisp, uh, there there's a physiological, physical process. Right. And if we don't have those fresh foods that are crisp, uh -huh. we eat chips. All right. So, I mean, so the fresh foods, I mean, they last well, but, but for a week in the refrigerator. But some of it is genetic. I, I know Phyllis 
craves salt at times. Mm -hmm. And she wants something that's salty. She'll sit around and say, I need some salt. And then she'll go get right. chips or something. Well, she may actually need salt. I crave salt. sugar. She may actually need salt. Salt's one of those things where, you know, if you yeah, don't you have, have enough, have you need it. Yeah. And so it, her body's telling her brain that she needs it. I think that's probably what Phyllis is but doing. But my body's telling my brain it needs sugar. That's because it's used to sugar. And the more you've had sugar, the more you crave sugar. So usually if you can go two weeks without having raw sugar in anything, then you don't crave it anymore. But then everybody backslides and has some, and then they crave it again. You know, it, it's it's a physiologic Yeah, there, a was, physiologic a, there was a fad diet issue. in the United States about 15 years ago that was based on white sugar. You know, stay away from white sugar, you can have other sugars. No, you can't. You can't have brown sugar. It's the same thing. It's just not bleached. Yeah. I mean, well, that's it's still sugar. That... And and honey, I had a patient when I was doing OB, I put her on, she had diabetes of pregnancy, and I put her on a low-carb diet, and she kept gaining unbelievable amounts of weight, and her sugars were up. And and I I finally said, okay, just tell me every single thing you ate today. And she had honey on everything. And she said, well, honey's not sugar. Yeah. Well, honey is sugar. <laughs> and it's very, very dense sugar. It's It will really stimulate your insulin. You can't use a lot of it, but it's still good for you, especially the, you know, the local honey. So we've talked about a lot about diet mm -hmm. and you recommend eat five or six times a day, small amounts, mm -hmm. moderate amounts, mm -hmm. not large prepared meals, but have prepared meals. Except for meals. dinner or one meal a day. So that, that was the next question I was going to ask. Is there like, I, I've seen articles that say, don't eat a big meal late, eat it early. Right. Does and and make... ideally I would eat my meals Early, but I de unfortunately my life's not ideal, and so I work late, and so on two days a week, so we always eat late those nights. Right. So that I mean, I would love to eat early. That's probably the best for you, but I don't usually do that. But it hasn't impacted my weight or how I feel. So it probably doesn't because you've trained yourself to do six times a day, moderate amounts. So I don't and eat so as much as, as I would a, if I was starving exactly. when I came home. Yeah, so you, that's the idea is never let yourself get so hungry you'll eat anything when you walk in, in into absolutely. your house. Absolutely. Or people that decide I'm going to go on a crash diet, I'm going to lose 10 pounds. And they, they say they don't eat breakfast, they don't eat lunch. They come home, get on the scale, and they haven't lost any weight. They say, the hell with it. And they eat a huge dinner. Right. Yeah. It's like, this isn't working for me. I can't do this. Uh -huh. But but so we talk about diet, and we also talk about exercise. Right. The exercise is an important component of your life. Yes. That again, you you cognitively, consciously think about and plan for, because it doesn't happen if you don't plan. Everybody's for Everybody's different. I love this book called The Colors of Fitness because it tells you pers your personality color and what your color is. Basically, it just tells you what you would like to do for exercise, and it's right. You know, it's it's based on the Myers Briggs personality scale. Mm -hmm. So, so I'm exactly what they say I am. I'm I'm a quicksilver, which is silver, and basically. I don't really love exercise unless I'm having an adventure, like I'm going on a hike or we're traveling through Europe and we're running around and we're running upstairs. And, you know, I mean, adventures and exercise for me are great, but on a daily basis, I have to have a trainer. I have to have a time. I have to, I have to lift weights and combine weights with aerobic exercise. That's my best exercise. So that's what... But you, I you said you need both kinds. You need aerobic exercise, mm -hmm. like, like running or walking. Or getting on that machine that we got on this morning. Or a machine. <laughs> and you need resistance exercises. Uh -huh. And mm -hmm. the resistance is to build up the muscles because, again, as you age, if you don't have the muscles, right. you don't have the balance, and you're more prone to falling. Well, you probably won't get muscle if you've lost all your testosterone. So the first step is testosterone. You have the foundation the to get The second step is exercise yourself, the areas that you want of your body you want to lose fat on, you should exercise. Everybody comes in and goes, I got this belly. I'm like, do abdominal exercises. You need to exercise the part of your body you want to lose the fat off of. So I, but we exercise everything. I mean, my, our trainer does balance, does yoga, does, uh, does aerobics. We do everything uh, in our training. And so to me, two times a week for that, and then one other day of exercise that's actual an hour of exercise and then the rest of my life is running up and down stairs and chasing um, well, an 18 you know, month a, old <laughs> psychologically we talk to people about you know you need to change your habits as much as mm -hmm. you can if your habits are harming you right and, and one example would be whenever there's an opportunity to go up a flight of stairs don't take an elevator right you know or, or 
park further away from the door mm -hmm. of the store that you're going mm -hmm. to and walk to the to the car back. Always used, a good I idea. I used to work with a psychologist that worked out regularly like you do with a trainer, mm -hmm. and she would drive around the parking lot for 10 minutes waiting for a slot to open up, and, and I would laugh at her. It's like, you know, you're going to exercise, park way out there and, and walk right. to and she wouldn't do it. She would not, absolutely not Some do it. Some of that it. has to do with women's shoes. Well, she had on her exercise shoes. Okay. Well, then, then she was going no to excuse. exercise. Yeah. No, that, was, <laughs> that wasn't what it was. I thought it might be. I yeah. was giving her an out. Yeah. You know, so so these are the things that I do that have nothing. I mean, I, I will do something else about supplements and that type of thing. But these are the things I do to, that everyone has to sit down and decide what's their best method. Uh -huh. And then... Not maybe not write a plan, but discuss the plan with the people you. So eat you would with recommend people and that, just make appointments with the, themselves or friends or a trainer to work out. That's a great point. Work out with someone right. if you can, because then you have you can interact then you with them. Have to be there. And you're accountable. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you would recommend if, if they don't know, find out about their blood type because mm -hmm. that affects their diet and food choices. I found that the blood that the Uh-oh. blood type diet. Live right for your type, which is the last book of the the guys that did the research on it. It it fits because the blood types are basically sitting right on top of your me metabolic genes. So our met metabolism and our blood type are linked. So that's an easy way to just kind of look at what kind of foods we should eat and what kind of foods we shouldn't eat. So, and then the color fitness would be one you would recommend. That would be for another book to decide to, what would work right. for you. I, I, what are you most likely to follow when through? When people on? go, oh, I don't like exercise. I don't know what to do. It, they look at this and they read it. It's very, very thin, and they say, Oh yeah, that's me. I, 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 I do like to do that stuff. Okay. And so then they have a plan. Okay. And then to close it out, my argument is always it has to be conscious, deliberate, intentional. If you go on autopilot, you won't do it. You won't follow the diet. You won't follow the exercise program. But if you intend it and you think about it, you're more likely to accomplish it. So think about those things. Think about how you eat. Think about how you exercise. Think about whether or not you need your hormones replaced. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.